Hello everybody, how's it going? So today we've got something different from uh, your favorite Greek. So today I'll be teaching you my grandma's melomakarana recipe. What is melomakarana? Melomakarana is truly is a staple of Greek festive Christmas cooking. Um, and I guess it would translate well to honey macaroons. Melo comes from the Greek word meli, but it is Greek, which means honey, makarono, macaroon. Macaroon obviously came from the Greek word first because the Greeks invented everything. Of course, Melo Macarona is an amazing dessert for all year round. You can make it for your friends to appear to be culturally diverse and a member of the intellectual elite. Right, so without further ado, let's take a look at our ingredients. Now, I must put a caveat here. I haven't been able to go out and pick my honey of choice and stuff because I've been in isolation because of the Omicron. I've had to rely on delivery uh, services, so I've had to make do with what they could send me. So, uh, it was a true Greek recipe. We've got the olive oil. Uh, that's not extra virgin, but it will have to do. Uh, some honey. We're gonna have some oranges, which we're gonna squeeze, squeeze, uh, for some fresh juice. We don't wanna use that ready-made orange juice because it's got corn syrup and shit like that. Just let's keep it fresh keep it clean we've got a quarter of a cup of cognac which i've also substituted with whiskey in the past and it comes out quite nice ground cinnamon uh ground oh no this is the nut oh i've got two ground cinnamon one ground cinnamon one ground nutmeg baking powder sugar and a plain british flour so now let's take a look at the dosages. We're gonna start with one cup of sugar. Okay, so we've got one cup of sugar in a bowl. Then we're gonna use two uh, cups of uh, olive oil. Now I know that this is not perhaps the, the fat of choice for my British friends out there, but it, it really works in this case. So we've got two cups of olive oil. Oh yeah. You know when you're Greek, you also brush your teeth with olive oil, and this is what you also use to clean the floor. And it works every time. Right. After that, we're gonna pour in our booze. Uh, again, uh, the recipe has got cognac, but I've used whiskey in the past and it works, works quite well as well. And after that, we're gonna put a, a small spoon. I'm not sure how you call this in English, like the, the definition of the term for that spoon, but a little spoon of ground nutmeg. I like to make it a generous spoon because I do like nutmeg. If you don't like nutmeg, learn to like it. There you go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a spoonful, so a big spoon of Cinnamon. Cinnamon is lovely. It really is. It really is a great flavor for winter. You know. Let me put some more in there. I like to make it generous. What can I say? Da 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 da. Boom boom. There you go. And finally, we're gonna put in two small uh, spoons of uh, baking powder. So. One, a two. We're gonna put this into one side and we're gonna squeeze uh, some oranges. Um, grandma would put a cup or cup and a half. I, uh, I've done this a few times, so two, two smallish oranges will give you what you need. Uh, avoid the ready-made juices. They're full of crap. You can buy this from a store for cheap and uh, you can have healthy juices for like, um, for you know, for cheap. So we're gonna chop. Let's see. I'm, on, I'm sure you can chop an orange, but anyway, so chop the orange, and we squeeze. We have to put our heart into it. Uh, of course, we live at times where fortifying our immune system is paramount. So this baby is gonna give you some fresh nutritious orange juice for very cheap you know again i think i bought it for a few quid from like a, a store so uh, we squeeze that and i'm gonna do the second orange as well and uh, after that we're gonna come to a really 
important and, 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 and a moment which is the flower and in Melo Macarona how you add flower is actually a little bit uh, different. It's, there's not like a specific um, sort of uh, dose um, but you have to kind of go with your feeling. So uh, I hope my feeling guides me correctly this time. Okay, we got this and one more. Okay, on it. Yeah, yeah. Now, some of you will make the criminal error of getting rid of the pulp, which is utterly sacrilege in my view. The pulp, this bit on top, is like the best bit. Oh, mmm, delicious. Mmm. Okay, and now we got this lovely, oh, let me try and make this as, uh, as sort of sexy as possible. I'm about it as slow mo. Oh. This is where we need to come closer to take a look at how we're going to go about the flower. Because like I said, there, it's, it's, it's really, you have to be intuitive with it and you have to make sure that the dough in the end is kind of nice and soft and fluffy. I'm going to change the camera angle so you can have a better look and uh, I'm going to get my hands dirty. Okay, uh, let's do this. All right, so now we got a nice clear view of our uh, liquid and like I said, this is a very, very uh, sort of instinctive process. So if I can get around to opening this flower, uh, what you want to do is you want to assign the squeezing for this hand and the pouring to this hand. And like um, you, it's, you, you'll see that the more you pour, it's going to start getting more set. Okay, I'll just pour. Okay, and start to scatter inside my uh, my. Um, little uh, Melo Macarona vaccine here. Uh, so you want to sort of go like that. And at some point you'll see that it's going to start getting a little bit more stodgy and you can, it's going to be easier to start working it. Okay, you got to work it. Oh yeah, push some more. Uh, I know it doesn't look particularly appetizing right now, but you wait till it's all ready. Oh yeah, okay. So now you can take a little break and I'm gonna try and keep this hand clean because um, I don't wanna like, <clears throat> I wanna have it free so I can pour some more. So you see now it's very, very liquid, right? So we need some more and we need to try and make it fairly smooth. Ah, oh, but it's, uh, it, smells, it smells lovely, okay. So, I'll probably put a little bit too much there now. Uh, anyways, uh, no, it's good. So that should be just right. So once I feel that there is enough flour in there, I'm gonna get both hands into this party, okay? So you wanna work the dough, you wanna work the dough, like, That does feel quite nice and light, you know? So all we need to do is really just, just work it so it's not very lumpy. It needs to be nice and smooth, okay? So you gotta work in it with your hands. Uh, and of course, my grandma and my, my mother and uh, my godmother, my mom's sister, have made this many, many times. This is only my fourth time executing this, so Theirs will taste a little better, but they don't have a YouTube channel. So there you go. You get this from me. So see now I feel that it's getting to a nice shape. Like it's cool. It's, it sort of feels sort of nice and smooth. My hands feel nice and greasy. They feel that I've been working hard. Okay, right. So I feel like we're kind of good to go i mean that feels quite smooth it's a little bit a little bit lumpy at places but i don't know I'm, i like my my i like my food uh rough in places i don't you know i don't mind that's why i'm really crap at making chopping a salad because I, I like big chunks okay 
Voila, that's our dough. Now we're going to have to prepare a tray and start building the melo macarona. Uh, the truth is, uh, you know, some people like it big, some people like it small. Um, they do tend to expand, so you kind of want to make them kind of smallish. I mean, I'll prob I can probably fill a couple of trays like that with that amount of dosage. So just, just pick a little bit and shape it. You can shape it like imagine you're shaping it into sort of a, a little, I don't know, um, I don't know how to call this, uh, a little oversized worm. Like if you look at, at looked at this worm on the pavement, you'd be like, oh, you gotta go do something about it. You, you're a bit big, like go at Wet Watchers or something. So this is a good size. So you wanna do that. And look, the, the dough is nice and wet and you, you do want it to be wet. It can be a bit slippery, so be careful when you're like molding them but oh, they'll be just lovely. They're just gonna be just right. So what I'm gonna do is go on and shape the rest of the Melo Macarona along those lines, okay? Right, so the first batch is done. The last thing that's left is to take a fork and we're gonna poke some holes on top of each Melo Macarono. Let's poke some holes. So the next step will be to put the Melo Macarona in the oven. I've been preheating the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes at medium high temperature. My oven doesn't really show temperature, so uh, it's currently tilted at about seven o'clock. The reason why we can be a bit more flexible in the temperature is because when you put them in, what you really want to happen is you want to see the top crisp up, uh, but not the whole thing. You don't want to overdo them. What you'll find out is that when you take them out of the oven, uh, they might still be a little bit soft when you poke them, they'll like bounce, but you have to let them cool down before we dip them in the syrup. So. Uh, they'll be fine basically, they'll, they will get hard. Right, so they've been in for about uh, 15 minutes or so. We're gonna take them out. Ah, there you go. You st still see that if I touch the bottom, it's quite fluffy. So what I'm gonna take is I'm gonna put them to one side and I'm gonna let them cool down. I've got another batch, so I'm gonna shove that in as well. And then we're gonna drizzle the syrup and then we're gonna crush some nuts and uh, yeah. Right, so time to make the syrup. For the syrup, we're gonna need two cups of water, two cups of sugar, and I'm gonna use two jars of honey, uh, which would amount to about roughly two cups of honey as well. Okay, let's do this. And then we're gonna boil, and what's gonna happen when we boil it is you're gonna see some white little froth appearing in the surface. Uh, you should know that when this happens, it's just about ready, so you've gotta keep stirring it. And when, once that white froth appears on the surface, we're gonna have to scoop that out, okay? And then we're gonna have to let it sit for a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna get that to boil in a minute, and once our melo macarona are um, cold, and then we're gonna dip the melo macarona in it. Right, so as you can see, I've been stirring this for about, uh, well, six, six, seven minutes or so. Uh, and again, that can vary depending on the fire. I mean, I've got an actual fire flame stove, so that cooks quite quickly. You can see that white froth formulating on the top here. Hopefully you can see that. So what we need to do, once it, it goes across the entire surface, is we want to start scooping it ever so gently in a little bowl. Okay, so let me, I've got my bowl ready. Already, my mom would be proud uh, if she could see me now. She's still here, she's not past or anything, but she's just not in the kitchen with me. Um, if she was, she would complain about how, uh, well, to her standards, how, you know, poor hygiene, which I think I think it's fine, I think it's clean enough. Right, we're gonna switch it off and we're gonna start scooping out that white frog. <laughs> 
So our syrup is now ready and, and it's all been, the foam has been cleared out. Uh, so I'm gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes because you don't want it to be sort of blazing hot. And then we're gonna start introducing the Milo Macarona, the biscuit, the macaroon, to the, to the syrup, the honey syrup. And it's gonna be a love fest and then we're gonna put the nuts and it's gonna be something, hopefully something beautiful. Let's, uh, let's wait a little bit and then we'll get to work. The finishing touches are about to be um, touched, are about to be executed. So what we'll need to do is uh, empty probably about half a bag of walnuts. We're gonna empty this in a, in a little plastic bag. Uh, maybe a bit some more. Like I said, we're gonna play Nutcracker for real. So we're gonna hold this bag and we're gonna smash the nuts. For the girls, the women that are gonna try that, you can imagine like it's a bad boyfriend or something. So once they're kind of fine-ish, you know that they're good to go. Right, so this is an important moment in the process of making the Melo Macarena. This is when we're gonna wet the Melo Macarena with the syrup. Now there is a few different ways of doing it. Some people would just lay them flat on a tray like this and they're just gonna drizzle the syrup on top of it. Uh, I will sometimes uh, opt to um, picking each Melo Macarena, dipping it into the syrup for a little bit and resting it in like a little tray uh, okay, uh, and then if I still feel the need to get a bit more wet, I'll, I might just drizzle some syrup in the end, okay? So I'm gonna be using some tonsils, and again, I'll be picking up each Melomacarno. I mean, this is kind of hot, it's not boiling, but uh, so we'll pick it up. There you go, in you go. Toop, 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 a little bit, out, choop, choop, there's one. So you can see them very lovely. Uh, and what we want to do now is we want to pour the nuts, okay? So I'm gonna pick up the little pieces and I could actually do them a little bit more fine, but it's okay. Uh, I know a certain someone in this house who likes to pick up the big chunks when they're drizzled in honey and eat them. So it's all good. Uh, I'm gonna save some for the other half of the other batch, but I just wanna make sure I get this done for you. Look at that, that looks, that's, see, that's, that's an image I, that's all too familiar. Okay, I'm gonna save some nuts for the other uh, half. So what you wanna do after you've done that, is you, and that all, all depends on how wet you want them, but uh, you can certainly um, get some of the sauce and pick up a spoon Let's pick up a nice spoon, take the syrup, and then and then sort of scoop some syrup and uh, let it sort of let it rain, let it rain. Right. So it's uh, oh lovely, and uh, oh they're just gonna get so lovely. They're gonna soak the syrup up. You don't want to do too much because then they're gonna be crumbling every time you want to pick them up. But look at that. This is just a think of. Beauty. So there you got it, ladies and gentlemen. A beautiful Melo Macarona. Uh, quite simple to make, very delicious. I tell myself that they're also very nutritious, so uh, I can give myself permission to eat a whole tray. And um, again, this is a, a, this this the flavor of that brings takes me back to my grandma's house, my mom's house, and uh, you know, for someone who's been living abroad for 15 years, although you know, England certainly feels like home to me. Um, it's really good to to make stuff like that because it, it just it just you know it takes you back to wonderful childhood memories and it gets you to remember your your birth home. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, if you make your own Melo Macarena, please tag me uh, on I'm George Marius official on Facebook or Instagram and stuff. I'd love to see your recipes and I'd really want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and. I wish for this to be a year where we learn to forgive, come together, converse, and yeah, I'll, I guess I'll see you in 2022, all right?
Cheers. And now we must eat them in La Macarna and I need some help from my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> and I cough all over them. <laughs> yes. <coughs> no eating. <laughs> eat something then. <laughs> Let me have half. You can have half. Mm, okay. Mmm. Mmm. Delio. Mmm. 